Well, hello, and welcome to the Skill Work Forum. I'm Tim. Generally, I'm I'm joined with my partner Brett on these podcasts. We talk about manufacturing, skill trades, things around the skill trades. But we're going to have a series of three podcasts that uh, a little bit of a departure from what we normally talk about. We're going to bring in three organizations, really heroes in our local community that give back, that support various needs across our community, the heartland, what we call home here. And we're hoping that it inspires you and your organizations and gives you some ideas on how you might be able to get involved financially or with your employees to be able to really do things maybe above and beyond what we normally think about in running our businesses. So thank you very much for the opportunity to share these podcasts with you. Well, hello and welcome again to the Skill Work Forum. I'm Tim, as always, joined by my partner, Brett. And we're excited today to have uh, a special guest with us, Assistant Director for Marketing and Communication for Food Bank for the Heartland. I want to make sure I got that right. Now, <laughs> a little different than our normal guest appearance. Uh, as you know, we've kind of teed up. We're doing a series of three community organizations that really help support the community at large and the emphasis that we're going to be focusing on over these podcasts is how we as an organization can get involved and support great organizations like Stephanie is here representing today. So Food Bank for the Heartland, tee it up just a little bit. It's a nonprofit organization here where we are in Omaha, Nebraska, but it's a central clearinghouse and you guys work with a network of 600 partners across 77 counties in both Nebraska and Iowa. You're actually pretty close to where we are. Your headquarters are. Mm -hmm. And we've done some work with you and partnered with your organization in the past. So we're kind of neighbors uh, and we certainly support your mission and what you guys do. So thank you, Stephanie, so much for joining us here today. Well, thank you so much for having me and for allowing us to spread awareness about what we're doing and the importance of corporate partnerships. We're very grateful. Yeah, absolutely. Very. Well, yeah, so we kind of Tim teed up a little bit there, but maybe uh, if you want to walk us through a little bit more about the organization, maybe how it got started. Yeah. You know, where do you all you serve? And Absolutely. And so. Happy to share. So Food Bank for the Heartland opened its doors in 1981. And at that time, it was volunteer-based, really. You know, they saw the need that was happening in the community, that people did not have the means to secure food for themselves. That's how it started. In that first year in 1981, we distributed roughly 38,000 pounds of food to 21 agency partners. So now we fast forward 43 years and we distributed nearly 30 million pounds of food last fiscal year to 514 network partners. And so you can see how much the need has increased in in four decades. We also have at this point 84 employees on staff. And so as the need has increased over the years, so has our staff. we are seeing levels of food insecurity we've not seen in our 43-year history. Mm. Right now, one in eight individuals across the heartland, with one in five being children, don't know where their next meal is coming from. Mm. And so the work we're doing and the support of the community is vital in helping us achieve our mission, which is to eliminate hunger across the heartland um, by providing healthy, consistent access to food through community partnerships. Wow. I mean, in a country as affluent and blessed as we are, that's seem that that's the case. But thank God for great organizations like yours that are trying to meet that need and step into that. And, you know, the fact I'm glad we're bringing awareness to this because the fact that uh, that's continuing to rise and escalate is something that companies maybe can step into a little bit. So along that vein, what do you think your organization is doing today that you're kind of most proud of? I mean, the numbers are you know, off the scale, but can you give us some examples? Yeah, I think I can speak for our entire leadership team when we are in absolute awe of our team. We think we have one of the best food bank teams in the country. Specifically, we've been operating in crisis mode really since the floods of 2019 Mm. in the heartland. Right after that came obviously the pandemic. And then after that came inflation. And Our team's ability to problem solve, collaborate, and pivot 
based on the needs of our community has been nothing short of remarkable. You know, we talk about the floods and the pandemic and inflation, and all of those things have gotten us to where we are today with these high levels of food insecurity that we haven't seen in our history. We have an amazing team that is able to just strategize and work together and completely pivot programs and reestablish programs to ensure that our neighbors still have consistent access to healthy food. And this is this is not an easy task. And food, there's a lot of different layers to food banking. And so we are just in awe of our team and their dedication to our mission. Wow. That's great. That's great. So, well, maybe share with us a little bit, you know, kind of where your donations come from. So, you know, obviously you have people that drop off, you know, a couple bags of food, you yeah. know, versus, you know, you know, organizations that, that, that donate. I know you've talked about how you guys have the ability to repackage and whatnot, yep. but so, but maybe a little bit of that, you know, kind of what is the balance, you know, how much is private and how much is, is business organizations? Yeah, great question. So financial donations come from a variety of sources, uh, individuals, companies, foundations, special events that the food bank hosts. Um, and though we've seen our average gift grow, we've actually seen a decrease in financial donations. And this is because people have gone back to their pre-pandemic philanthropic priorities. Many people think COVID is in our rear view mirror, which it is, but they think there's no longer an issue with food insecurity, which is far from the truth. Mm. We are serving four <clears throat> times the number of households as we did prior to the pandemic. Um, so we know that the problem has gotten much worse. And unfortunately, not everyone realizes that. Wow. So that's where our financial donations come in from. In, in terms of food donations, like you mentioned, that comes in through three different sources. We have the donations from our corporations, our retailers, manufacturers, individuals. And then we have also donations from the government, that's the USDA. And then the other bulk is purchased by us. And we use our monetary donations to purchase that food. This year, we have upwards of a $6 million food purchasing budget, which... Wow. We never thought we would have, right? And we can't sustain that budget. And so that is why corporate relationships are so important. So you've mentioned a couple of times, uh, Stephanie, food insecurity. And, you know, I think of, it's a concept that's foreign to a lot of people probably listening to this podcast. These are business leaders mm -hmm. and people. So food insecurity, they, could you tell us a little bit? I know, I know we, it's just come to my mind. What is that? What does that do in the, to the psyche of people when they don't know where their next meal is coming from? I mean. It's got to, you know, ripple into all areas of their life. It does. And I don't think many people realize how much it's happening. It is happening to your neighbor next door, to your coworker, to your friend at church. It's happening in your children's classrooms. This is no longer just a rural problem or an urban problem. It is an everywhere problem. And what people may not understand is the damaging effects, not just on your physical health, but to your mental and emotional well-being. Our neighbors are filled with such anxiety and stress because they don't know where their next meal is coming from. But also they're trying to manage, you know, the rise of the cost in food compared to, you know, medications and rent, utility, childcare. And so... They're struggling every day and having to decide whether they put food on the table for their families at night or whether they pay their rent. And neighbors are having to make these unthinkable decisions every single day. And as we head into the winter months, that anxiety is going to get worse as we see food insecurity levels increase during the winter. Mm, yeah. And you mentioned inflation as a huge driver because you know, your dollar's not going to go as far. And so it's a great awareness needs to, needs to happen amongst people because the majority of affluent people probably don't think that is a large scale issue because it's just not part of our day to day concern. So, and that's the hardest part about food insecurity is it is a hidden issue. If it's not happening to you and you don't see it happening around you, you think it's not happening. Yeah. Um, but that's the furthest thing from the tr from the truth. We're seeing so many neighbors come to our mobile distributions or come to our pantries and say, "I never thought I would be in this situation." Yeah. You know, I have a job, my husband works, and I never thought I would need food assistance. But yet here I am just because times are hard right now. And we are in a place of non-judgment. We want people to know that if they need us one time or if they need us for an entire season, we are here to help. 
Um, and it's wonderful to see how our community works together to help serve our neighbors in need. Yeah, as I, I, and I'm sure there's a stigma. You know, there's some level of shame that goes along with that. People don't want to, you know, uh, that's that's something that's, that they don't want to publicize. Mm -hmm. So the more that corporation will talk about this, companies that can get in and just provide that or even allow their employees to get involved with the organization. So, uh, yeah, it's it's great awareness. Thank you for bringing it. So. Yeah, no, that's Absolutely. great. Yeah, so, you, you know, we talked about it a little bit before we started the podcast, but, you know, I have a, before Tim and I started skill work, you know, um, prior 30 years of my professional career was in the food manufacturing space. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, uh, was very close to the reality of, of whether it's product that, that we sold to retailers and then they, you know, we'd go out of date and you'd have to credit them and all these, you know, there's the amount of food loss and then restaurants are a whole nother, you know, beast into itself, you know, um, from that standpoint, but obviously you guys are with that $6 million budget, you mentioned you're buying obviously some product that is, yeah. that you're selling for, or trying to buy it pennies on the dollar that they're basically, it's going to go out of date or whatever the case is type of thing, or it's a mistake or, you know, whatever the case, but a variety of things. So, so how do you guys kind of, uh, where are the opportunities? Obviously some of our team, we were down at, uh, the show IPPE and actually ran into in Atlanta, Georgia and ran into two people from your organization in Omaha that were there looking to secure partnerships with, with food and IPPE is the international poultry and process expo. Mm -hmm. So lots of food companies that are there and, and obviously, um, trying to, you, you used a term before you can repeat it because I can't remember what it was on how they like rescuing rescue yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. want rescuing to say repurpose yeah. yeah yeah so talk about that a little bit yeah so food industry partnerships are essential to our work and there's a lot of different ways manufacturers can get involved with a food bank you mentioned rescuing we work with partners to rescue food so if a manufacturer has food that is you know hit its kind of damaged a little bit yep. towards the end of its life we can take that food and repackage it and get it back out to our neighbors in need so that food does not get wasted. That is one of our priorities at the food bank to ensure that um, we reduce the amount of food waste in our country because we know that's a huge, huge problem. Yeah. And another way that our food um, industry partnerships are vital to our mission is because they can donate large donations of food, such as protein, that's vital to ensuring that our neighbors receive that healthy food that they need. And so Food Bank for the Heartland is actually one of nine food banks across Feeding America's network, across the country, that offers a protein repack room. And it allows us to take those large-scale donations of protein and break it down into family-friendly mm -hmm. servings. And that is distributed across the 93 counties we serve. And I've been at some of our, our mobile pantries when uh, they receive this protein and this meat that they know can feed their family for up to two weeks. And the smiles on their faces and the joy that I see is just, it's amazing. And so those food industry partners are vital to our mission because they can get those large scale donations to us. Yeah. No, it's a very un unique ability. I'm glad you, you talked about that capability to be able to, like you said, to repack they're going to, they're going to donate it typically in bulk, right? you know, which doesn't do, you know, a 30 pound, you know, box of meat doesn't necessarily, you know, you know, work to be able to, to get it out. So, so the ability to do that. So do you do that just at the facility? Yeah, we do that right there yeah. at our food bank uh, that's, volunteer center. That's, really that's wonderful. Is the skilled labor shortage hurting your company's bottom line? Skillwork is the premier staffing agency focusing exclusively on skilled labor. Our team of highly skilled workers augments your existing teams for elevated impact and decreased downtime. Partnering with hundreds of facilities in more than 30 states we deploy our traveling industrial technicians to work for you on a contract basis. Our philosophy is simple, to honor God in all we do, bring respect back to the skilled trades, and positively impact those around us. For more information on how Skillwork can deliver the top labor talent you need, visit skillwork.com or call us at 
447-7058. Call us today to see how Skillwork can work for you. You know, just to put a little, you know, numbers around that, USDA statistic that, that we found, Economic Research Service from the USDA estimated 31% food loss at the retail and consumer level, so about a third of the food that you see out there. In practical terms, that equates to 133 billion, a billion with a B, pounds with an approximate value of $161 billion worth of food that was lost or wasted. Yeah. And this is from several years ago, you know, so it's probably beyond that now. And that's just crazy to that's think crazy. that that much is wasted. Yeah. And, you know, we when organizations like yours can take that and repurpose it. Do you, Stephanie, do you, you guys, I know it would be on a shorter basis and, and I'm not sure how you guys handle it, but like from restaurants, because obviously restaurants, you know, whether it's, Panera's and, you know, today's bagels, yeah. you know, or whatever. Do, do you guys try to do anything there? Or that doesn't really work as much. Because of our compliance and food safety, yeah. uh, we can't take food that's already been that's what I'm... Um, cooked. But there are local nonprofits in the area. I know Saving Grace is a great one uh, that takes food such as, you know, restaurant food okay. and then can reutilize that and repackage that. That's good to know. So, all right. Yeah, I, could, I was thinking about that. You know, the USDA and uh, we, we work on a lot of our customers and clients are uh, food and beverage, food manufacturing and the, and the uh, requirements mm -hmm. uh, and compliance to have yeah. to deal with that. Yeah. So you guys have to follow those guidelines as well. Absolutely. We have food safety audits um, mm -hmm. and food safety is of the utmost importance to us. Right. Um, we get volunteers coming in every single day. We have to make sure every step of the way our food safety requirements are being followed. Um, to ensure that our neighbors are safe, right, when they receive that food. So, as I mentioned before, we're neighbors, and we have supported your organization for practically with some of our employees. And how can organizations get involved with, you know, specifically your organization, but the across the country? How can a company that's out there saying, yeah, we're coming to the holiday season, we'd love to get involved locally, and this sounds like a worthy cause, especially a company that's in the food manufacturing space already. How, right. how do you recommend that? Uh, a company get involved? There are so many wonderful ways for companies to get involved. And our development team works with companies of all sizes to ensure that no matter how they want to get involved, that it fits the needs of, of their employees and is the right fit. So we offer various different sponsorships um, for events that companies can get involved in. There's also opportunities every single day to volunteer. If it's a local company, they can come directly to the food bank and in fiscal year 2024, we had over 54,000 hours donated wow. to our volunteer center. Um, with the food that comes in to our warehouse, over 30% of it needs to be touched by our volunteers and repackaged. Uh, our volunteers work every day on the backpack meals for our backpack program and packing community boxes for our mobile pantry program. So these are critical programs that are feeding our neighbors every single day. And our volunteers play a huge role in that. Mm. There's also obviously corporate giving, corporate matches. Um, we have seen relationships really flourish because of their ability to work with the food bank <coughs> and provide, for example, a company match. Uh, Woodhouse Auto Family has been a great partner for us. And uh, they, shout out to Woodhouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've been huge supporters of our backpack program. Uh, this year they're doing a $250,000 match. So every gift donated to our backpack program <coughs> will be matched by Woodhouse. And just another interesting side note to that story is we learned a couple years ago that there was an employee who had been helped by the backpack program. His kids were receiving the backpack program. They were coming home with nutritious food in their backpacks every day. He didn't quite understand it. And then years later started working for Woodhouse and heard from the leaders themselves about the importance of working with the food bank. And it kind of all clicked for him. And he realized, wow. you know, he could create change and he could help somebody else who was struggling. And so that's the power of, of corporate relationships and how it can, can change the trajectory of someone's life. Okay. Great story. So, so what are, you know, you mentioned it a, a little bit before, but you know, what are mm -hmm. some of the maybe misconceptions of, of getting involved with the food bank? You mentioned, I think probably the biggest, Thing that has to get communicated is just the need mm -hmm. you know like i said i'm i think most of us can't really wrap our head around that neighbors making a decision between paying this bill or putting food, food and and maybe the 
the trade-off is they just, it's really not very healthy food, you know, type, type thing. But what other misconceptions? I mean, what are some of the needs or the misconceptions of getting involved? I think that one of the misconceptions is that because the food bank is headquartered in Omaha, that we just serve Omaha. We want companies to know when they are getting involved with the food bank, they are supporting neighbors across 93 counties across the heartland. Food Bank for the Heartland has the second largest service area across Feeding America's network of 200 food banks. And so you may be volunteering in Omaha or you may be sending a check to Omaha, but you are helping hundreds of thousands of people across the heartland. This is a regional effort and we can't do this without our corporate partners. So they are making a, a huge significant impact, not just on people here in Omaha, but across Nebraska and Western Iowa. Yeah, and I think it's really a great opportunity, particularly that the business, a lot of the businesses we deal with are in the food manufacturing. So maybe there's an, you know, a light bulb has gone on out there that you could say, how do we connect with giving, you know, practical product mm -hmm. to a food bank? But volunteering their people as well, what a great way to people that are in the food manufacturing business to have their employees go you know, provide the end product to people really in need. So yeah. what a great opportunity to serve. Are there some opportunities coming up as we head into the holiday season? Do you see the need increase like Thanksgiving meals, Christmas meals, things like that? Yes, absolutely. There's, I mean, hunger never has an off season, uh, but we do see hunger spike in that November, December timeframe. Um, costs of other things go up. And obviously that stress and that anxiety sets in. So we do see food insecurity levels spike. And there are so many creative ways to get involved. If, if somebody wants to get involved and it maybe isn't in Omaha and they can't volunteer, we've seen different companies host virtual fundraisers. You know, we've seen companies host food drive, different food drives and build structures out of canned goods. I mean, people are getting really creative. I have to give a shout out to another company, Omaha Steaks. Our relationship with them has flourished, and obviously they have a national reach, but they love partnering with other companies. For example, for the last several years, they've been partnering with United Rentals, which is also a national company that has a local presence. United Rentals gives their employees a holiday gift every year of Omaha Steaks, and those employees turn around and give that back mm. to the food bank. So it's a really neat way of two organizations with a national reach working together to help um, our local neighbors in need. That's great. And so, you know, we have just really been inspired by the corporations and their creative ways on on how to really step up their game and doing whatever it takes to meet this need in our communities. That's great. I, I love that. And I think, you know, it, it's part of our heartbeat as a company is we want to give back as well. So, it's an, I'm sure it's inspiring to Brett and I too to get you know think about how we can give back and you know this the holidays are going to be on us soon by the time this gets aired we'll be rolling really close to that so it's a great time for even companies that are facing economic headwinds just the ability to give back your uh, people really in need and then maybe even some of your employees that are mm -hmm. uh, silently struggling with food insecurity or yeah. fear. So oh, thank you so much for sharing the story. Any final comments, Brett, or questions? No, I, like you said, I think we just, our heartbeat and skill work is always, you know, Tim and I found the company, you know, we're faith-based guys. And so we have a high value system. And part of that is, is this, this willingness to give. And, and, you know, we, we believe, you know, if you wait until the perfect time to give, you'll never give. And so, you, so you got to sacrifice sometimes and obviously, you know, Sometimes just having a greater awareness of the level of needs, you know, that are out there. You know, we are blessed, you know, whether we, some days we may not feel as much as others, but we are every day. And yeah. so, uh, so yeah, so I, like Tim said, I'm just super grateful for what you guys are doing because, you know, we got to go to work every day and somebody's got to help. And so, you know, but we can surely, you know, partner with you and, and encourage other companies to do so. And, you know, being a, a guy in the food manufacturing and watching a lot of food get made, you know, and, and a lot of it sadly get, you know, messed up and thrown away sometimes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. we could all do better at that. And I know a lot of the big companies do, but so, but yeah, it's been great having you on. Dan. Well, I want to thank both of you because we know that these relationships work best when it's coming from the top down, right? When the leaders of an organization realize their social responsibility, um, 
to help us in the fight against hunger. Uh, and that's when we we see really the most creative solutions and the most successful relationships. So thank you both for what you're doing and for helping us in this in this great fight. Absolutely. Anything else you want our audience to know or hear before we close today? If they're interested in learning more, they can visit our website, foodbankheartland.org. Um, there they will find information on how to give, whether that's through financial donations, food donations. They can learn more about volunteering. And of course, if they need support in finding food assistance, that information is on our website as well. Great. That's Food Bank for Heartland. Foodbankheartland.org. Foodbankheartland.org. <laughs> Go out there and, and support the, an organization like Stephanie represents or another one. And, and as we said at the beginning, you know, we know this is not our normal flow here and what we normally talk about. We normally talk about business things and staffing and manufacturing. But at the end of the day, those things are temporal. But they don't have eternal or everlasting or really huge impact like this. So thank you for your, taking the time to listen in today. As always, we at Skillwork exist to provide great men and women to companies across the country to help you with your skilled trade staffing issues. So if you have any needs along those lines, reach out to us. We'd be happy to talk to you. Go out and check our podcast out or our content out. You know, it's on any place you can get podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, et cetera. And again, we appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, God bless. This is Brett Elliott, CEO and co-founder at Skillwork. Prior to starting Skillwork, I spent over 30 years in the food manufacturing space. From literally starting out cleaning the restrooms to becoming the maintenance manager, then the plant manager, to eventually becoming the president and owner, I've seen the manufacturing world from many perspectives. And like many of you, I've seen firsthand the growing need for higher skilled workers, while at the same time experiencing the shortage of this skilled talent. I started Skillwork to address that need. I knew the headhunter and the local temp agency models were not the solution. If you're experiencing the same shortage of talent at your facility, we would love to connect you with our team. Give us a call at 402-447-7058 or visit us online at skillwork.com.